hi all welcome to a new video on data modeling and interceptor in hybris so in this video we will be seeing how to do the data modeling so we will be defining a, a new table uh, named as yts document we will be see how to define the enum types and also the collection types and we will be seeing how to define the dynamic attributes and its handler and at last we will be seeing uh, the interceptor in hybris and we will be doing the hands-on for the interceptor as well so let's get started so i have prepared a note uh, and which we, i will be providing the link of this note in the description of this video so in order to do the data modeling open your code base and you have to go to the yts core extension and here uh, under yts uh, core extension uh, you have to go under the resource and you have to open the core item.xml okay let me first paste this code so first copy the collection type i will be explaining one by one uh, of each uh, attributes so copy this uh, uh, collection type and you have to paste the collection type under the collection types and next we will be defining the uh, enum types so copy all the enum types till here and paste it under the enum types then copy the item types so copy from the type group and paste it below okay so i have defined the type group uh, as a document and under document i have defined the item type as yts document so and i have defined the type code as 20100 uh, so uh, it is recommended that uh, use the type code above the 15000 so for a safer side i have used as uh, 20100 and this type code should always be unique so that's why it is recommended to use above the 15,000 because uh, uh, till uh, 12,000 uh, to 15,000 uh, it has the uh, hybris as a reserved type code and here I have defined the attributes so under attribute the first attribute is the code which is of type a string and I have keeps the modifier optional as false and unique as true because i need this code attribute as a mandatory one and i have given the read access but uh, the once the code is defined means so once the entry is uh, stored in the table so you can't edit the code attribute so i have made this as disable uh, write access as disabled so i defined as the initial as true so this if you define the initial as true so whenever you create the entry for this table uh, in the back office so it will ask to enter this particular attribute if you define the initial as true and i have defined the search as true and keep the persistence type as property similarly i define the document name and it is type of localized string but this attribute is optional so this is not a mandatory attribute and i have defined the keyword as uh, as type of a keyword list so this is the keyword list is the collection which i defined earlier so this is the way to define the list so uh, sorry collection so a keyword list is a type of uh, list of a string so next attribute is the url so i uh, it, this is also a localized 
string and I have provided the default value for the URL which is uh, slash here and this is the optional attribute and next is a document type and language so for the document and type and the language I have defined the uh, type as uh, doc type enum and as a language type enum so I need the doc type as the predefined value so that's why I have defined uh, used as uh, enum type so whenever you want the predefined value used as a uh, enum and under enum types you can define the value for the uh, it so these are the document for the uh, these are the predefined value for the document type and these are the value for the language type enum and i have used one boolean attribute which i have used uh, means uh, i have defined the qualifier as visibility and this is the optional um, attribute and we have the default attribute for it which is false and last i have defined the qualifier as a document age so this is the type of integer and this is the dynamic its persistent type is dynamic and we have the attribute handler for it which is name as document age so uh, basically if you define the persistent type as dynamic so uh, um, you will be getting uh, you can uh, populate the value of the qualifier by the customized code so that's the reason we are defining the type as a dynamic and uh, we will be uh, doing all the code for this dynamic attribute in the uh, attribute handler uh, which is named as document age so we will be creating the handler uh, class uh, which is named as document age handler and where we will be populating the value for uh, document age according to the business uh, business logic so uh, yeah, after you define after you have done with the data model changes so you can do the localization for this table so in order to do the localization so you have to go to the uh, YTS score uh, resource folder and then in the localized folder you have to open the local YTS score locals en dot property and you can copy the localized attribute from here and paste here so basically if you localize the attribute so whatever the attributes I defined here so you will be getting the localized name for that attribute in the back office so such as i have named the uh, attribute as document name in yts document table so in the back office you will be seeing the document name as document name uh, sorry doc name as document name similarly for the long la language you will be getting the name as the document language so that is the use of the localization so once you did the localization and the data modeling is complete uh, you have to trigger the and clean all so in order to trigger the and clean all you have to go to your hybrid folder then you have to go to the hybrid bean platform and open cmd here set the environment and trigger and clean all so and clean all will takes approx 20 to 30 minutes depending on the system speed so i will be back once uh, the and clean all is completed so guys our build is successful it took about 40 minutes in my system so now next task is to define the attribute handler so for the attribute handler uh, document age uh, we will be defining a, a java class for it uh, which is named as the document age handler so let's go back to the notes 
So first we have to create the package named as com.yts.code.attributes. Then we will define the class. So under YTS core extension, go to the SRC folder and here the com.yts.core extension right click click on new and then click on package so it will create the package and inside the package we have to create a new class named as document age handler so right click uh, new then java class paste here click on class okay so uh, for the uh, attribute handler we have to extend the abstract uh, dynamic attribute handler so right here extend extend it to abstract dynamic attribute handler and for this you have to give the value and the item type of it so my attributes type is integer so i will give the value i need a value for this qualifier as integer and you have to give the item type for it its item type is yts document so provide here the model so it will yts document model you have to give so copy the code from here and paste here and import the statement So for the YTS score, in oh, you have to open the YTS score as well. Duplicate this and define this variable as well. YTS document here. So I will be explaining this code. And its type I need as integer. And I will give the ERS. Nineteen ninety seven. Okay, now let's see the business logic behind this code. So first, I have defined a logger for exceptions. Any type of exception, I have uh, prepare a logger. So I have defined a um, function named as get, which a written type is integer and i have taken a, a one variable as int variable and defined as a document age and i have assigned to zero and i have defined a try catch block so if any error occur inside this code so it will be hand i mean sketch and uh, under this block so main logic behind this attribute is that so i need uh, to calculate the document age so suppose uh, i have a document here defined as nine, uh, 1997 and 
when the document will be created so it will calculate the document uh, created time uh, minus the uh, year which i have mentioned here so suppose if i am creating the document today so this uh, year is 2022 so here the logic behind is that creation year minus the uh, year of document so creation year will be the time when i am creating this document so that is 2022 if i create today then it will be 2022 minus this uh, 1997 that is document year so uh, the value will be 25 and this value will be getting populated for this document age attribute so we don't have to enter the uh, value for the document age it will be calculated behind this code so that is the um, use of the dynamic uh, attribute so that's the reason we are defining this attribute type as uh, means uh, attribute persistent type as dynamic and in the handler we will be defining the logic uh, here you will be defining the business logics so you can see so first i have fetching the date so from the model so our model is yts document model so it will fetch the creation time from the model then i have used the calendar uh, object so in the from the calendar object i have created the calendar instance and set the time uh, for the document creation and time uh, which i am fetching from the model and and for, uh, i have defined the uh, creation year uh, the data type as int so uh, this cal dot get uh, calendar dot year will def uh, find uh, means fetch the uh, document creation time year so suppose if i am creating today then it will be 2022 it will fetch it and it will subtract with my constant value which i have defined in the constant file that is 1997 and so whatever the document age i am getting so it will be populating that same value in this qualifier and so after define uh, after you define the um, at uh, this document age handler means your uh, attribute handler so you have to do the wiring for uh, this uh, class so in order to do the wiring for this class you have to go to its spring.xml file so uh, this file is present under yts core so you have to open the yts core spring.xml file and at bottom you have to do the wiring for this so you can copy this so here you can see i have given the bean id and here you have to mention the class path of the document age handler so if you click here so it will directly navigating to the document age handler uh, class so basically uh, uh this is the class part you have to mention while uh, during the um, wiring so uh, that's all for the um, dynamic attribute uh, and uh, attribute handler now let's move to the interceptor concept so basically there are five type of interceptor in hybris uh, first one is init default interceptor prepare interceptor validate interceptor load interceptor and remove interceptor so init default interceptor has been called while uh, you're saving uh, the model so basically it provides the default value and uh, prepare interceptor uh, has been called uh, if you modify or add any values uh, for the your entries and the validate interceptor uh, is been used to validate the value you which you have provided for your qualifier so and load interceptor is been called uh, when you are fetching the entries from your database 
and remove interceptor is been called suppose if you are deleting any entries in the table so that time uh, if you want to validate any uh, um, any attribute uh, for that entries so you can use the remove interceptor so uh, in this video i have shown uh, the use of the validate interceptor and the remove interceptor so let's do the hands on hands on for this so i have already uh, done the code for this in order to save the time so what you can do so first step uh, all the steps i have mentioned in the website so first you have to create the package uh, as com.yts.code.interceptor so under uh, yts core extension and inside uh, com.yts core you can right click and create the new package name as interceptor which i have already created and you have to create the two classes for your interceptor so first one i have created as yts document remove interceptor and second one i have created as yts document validate interceptor so let's first see the validate interceptor so uh, after creating the classes for for the your interceptor so you have to uh, implement so your interceptor to the validate interceptor classes and you have to provide your the item type so basically this is a model so yts document model and uh, as this is a validate interceptor you have to override on validate method so similarly for the remove interceptor uh, if it is a remove interceptor then you will be using the on remove method you will be overriding the on remove method and in the parameter uh, you have to pass your model then your interceptor context and then you have to throw the interceptor exception so he, if you see here the business logic why i have used the interceptor here so uh, for the requirement uh, i need that when the code value is been entered um, so i need the code values as a alpha numeric uh, without uh, user is entering uh, without any space so first criteria it should be alphanumeric and second criteria is it should not contain any space uh, for the code so 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 for to fulfill this requirement i am using the on validate interceptor so you can see uh, inside the on validate interceptor i have uh, uh, written the code for this first i am fetching the code from the model model dot get code so it will store the our code and in e block i am checking whether this is alpha numeric or not uh, if it is alpha numeric then it is okay if it is not alpha numeric then this uh, will return false and it will throw the interceptor exception or else if it contain any uh, spaces uh, it will throw the interceptor exception and similarly for the remove interceptor you can see uh, if it is a remove interceptor you have to implement the remove interceptor class and uh, uh, you have to pass same uh, your item type or model and you have to override on remove uh, method same you will pass the model and the interceptor context and you will be throwing the interceptor exception so you can see so what the business logic i have provided here so uh, we have the attribute uh, in our item uh, type as visibility so which is boolean so i want the user should not delete uh, the entry if the visibility type is true so for that i have used the remove interceptor you can see uh, if the visibility type is true it will not allow the user to delete that entry and it will throw the interceptor exception so after writing all the business logic uh, you have to map this uh, you have to uh, you have to do the wiring uh, in the yts core spring.xml so you can see here we uh, i have done the wiring for the validate interceptor and uh, remove interceptor and second bin is for the 
uh, for the mapping so interceptor mapping so what your custom in uh, so what your custom interceptor you have to map with the interceptor mapping so you have to do for the interceptor mapping you have to define the interceptor uh, your custom interceptor name that is why yts document validate interceptor same name you have to provide here and you have to provide a type code so type code is nothing but your the item type so uh, in our case the uh, item type is yts document so similarly you have to do for the remove interceptor first the wiring and uh, for the wiring uh, you know how to do the wiring uh, you have to define the uh, id uh, and then you have to define the class path and second is the interceptor mapping Sim in similar way in inter uh, you have to define the properties and in interceptor you uh, you will be referring it to the uh your custom interceptor uh, bean id which is provided here and you will be providing the type code so once this all things is done then we will we uh, we are good to build the uh, build our code so in order to build our code uh, you can go back to your hybrid setup go to hybrid bean platform open cmd here and you have to trigger ant all so in order to do ant all first you have to set the environment and trigger ant all so once the ant all is complete uh, we will be resuming for the next task so once the ant all is complete we will be starting our hybrid server then we will be doing the platform update so i will be back once the ant all is completed so guys ant all is completed uh, our build is successful it took almost uh, 19 minutes in my system so once the ant all is complete you can start your hybrid server in debug mode so let's wait uh, till the server get started so once the server get started we will be doing the platform update so guys our server has started um, so now open hsc Give the credential here admin password nimda So once the HSC is open, go to platform, then go to update. And here you have to uncheck the create essential data. and only you have to check the update running system and localized type so i think here yeah initial data take a few seconds to load so you have to take care that here nothing is checked So only you have to select the update running system and localize type and then click on update. 
so once the update is completed then we will be ready to validate our changes so guys our update is completed successfully so once the update is complete uh, open the back office and log in with your credential okay so once the back office has been rendered successfully in filter tree search for types click on types and here you will have to search your model so basically our model is yts document so this is our model so copy this and search it so here is our model yts document open this and you have to click on this third icon this is search by type so our table is open so we will populate some entry here so click on this plus icon so here you can see code so we have uh, introduced a, a validator interceptor for code so our code should be alphanumeric and it should not contain any spaces so let's try this so i will provide some non alphanumeric value here and here you can see document name it is asking so if you it this is not uh, non mandatory field if you keep it empty then also uh, it will accept but basically it has asked you to uh, we have enabled the initials so you have remember at starting of the videos i mentioned uh, about the initials so if you uh, come down for the document name you can see the initials as mentioned as true so that's the reason it is asking for to enter the document name so that is the use of the initials if you enable initials is to equal to true so when you will be creating the entries that time uh, it will ask you to uh, enter the value for that qualifier so let me give it as test and here the document type and language we have defined as enum so as i already mentioned enums are the predefined values so you can see all the predefined values which have we have configured in enums so that all values are appearing so select the language and here i will keep the visibility as true and click on finish so you can see it is showing the interceptor uh, exception uh, you can see document could not uh, document code so, uh, should be uh, alphanumeric without space so same message is been rendered here which we have configured so that means our interceptor is working perfect so let's try with space so this also throw the exception because uh, in our uh, code uh, we have configured as like uh, it should if it contain the space then it should, uh, it should throw the exceptions you can see it is throwing the exception so let me make it alphanumeric now click on finish now this time it should create the entry yeah our entry is created so next one we will validate about the remove interceptor we have one more interceptor which we have configured so we have configured as if the visibility is true uh, then it should throw this exception a document could not be removed if uh, visibility is true so for our this entry the visibility is true so let's try to delete this entry so it should uh, give the exception interceptor exception Mm, so 
let's try to delete it yeah you can see it is showing the exception and same you can get it in the console in console you can see it is showing the exception the document could not be removed um, if the visibility is true so now let's make the visibility as false so this time it will be allowing it to delete yeah our entry has deleted successfully so that is the use of the interceptor so that's all for this video see you on the next video thank you